Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Ski Jumping. So here's the map, and I'm going to go ahead and switch up the vehicle real quickly because I want a white car on a white map mostly because it makes it hard to see things. So we're going to go with the D35 V8 four-wheel drive extended cab automatic version of the D-Series, which is like a whole sentence to say. And we'll just put it in red because that's a good color that will stand out really well in this white backdrop. Now from the start, you don't want to accelerate the whole way because if you accelerate the whole way, you can really get some air right there. You want to cruise just a little bit like that so you make sure you don't spin out and you don't get any damage before the actual jump. So you can see the jump right there. And then there's a big gaping hole until you get to the landing zone. So exiting the jump right there. You usually want to be going about at least 120 miles per hour. And it does depend on which vehicle you're using. But it seems like most of them will make it with 120. And some of them will make it with some despair. So there's a landing which is actually pretty smooth compared to some of the other ones I've seen where you started rolling and stuff. That one was a harsh hit, but we didn't roll until now. And that suspension is so jacked up right there. It looks like it's on hydros or something the way it's popped up. It's not, but it looks like it is, don't it? And I cannot turn it left or right to influence this in any way, yet somehow I can still accelerate. Is it actually rotating the front wheels too in this situation? It is. Somehow I am still putting power down to the front wheels. I would have thought for sure that would be broken. Uh, as for control, none. We could go in circles and that's it. So let's go and reset this guy and swap it to a different vehicle. So we'll kind of just work our way through the list of what I would think would be interesting. Starting from the bottom. So let's go with the T-Series with the cement mixer. So this is like the heaviest stock vehicle we could possibly use here. And it's two red vehicles in a row. I didn't think about that. Have to wiggle it a little bit to get free. And apparently this thing is running 47 bars of boost. Yeah, uh -huh, sure it is. Like, that's just absurd. To have that many bars of boost on something like, even like this. Like a heavy-duty diesel engine? No, not happening. And this thing's actually able to get to surprisingly high speeds. Like, it's going just as fast as the D-Series was off the edge of the jump, and... Well, it can fly. It thinks it has wings or something. And this one's actually going to roll over onto itself on the landing. I kind of did that intentionally by holding going to the left as we were in the air. It does influence it a little bit. But using the gas pedal and the brakes and the parking brake and all that while you're in the air can influence the direction you go in. And I can kind of demonstrate that on the next run. But uh, first, I want to just make sure you guys get a good look at this flaming 18-wheeler where the fire is so loud. I still don't know why the fire is so loud in this game. It's crazy. All right, let's let not go in order and just go to the ETK K series because that's the new vehicle. So it seems like it might be a fun one to use. And the audio just cut out right there for a second. That was my fault. The audio for the game, I mean. Anyways, slow and then floor it. And I guess I could just floor it there too and take a chance it'll actually work out. But I'm not the kind of person to take chances because odds are never in my favor. All right, tires deflated, but we can still jump. So if we hit the brakes, you'll notice the front really tips forward. It was pretty stable until I hit those brakes. Once I did that, it started tipping, and then we could kind of steer left and right to influence even more, and can land on our roof, basically, and actually... There we go. I was going to say, not roll too many times, but there's one more roll. I was thinking, like, an angle like that, we would get a few more rolls, but it actually did a pretty good job of not rolling. And absolutely nothing is going to come from this car. It is dead, so... Reset it and swap it out for Grand Marshal, and we'll get this as the V8 Lux. Because why not? I see no reason why not to. So go and floor it. Get some air. Let's see if we can land this. So as you see, this is what happens when you floor it, and this is why I say you shouldn't. Fuel tank rupture, but that shouldn't slow us down physically. I think I might even have enough speed to make this jump. It's not going to be a clean looking jump, but 130 something, that should be good. And then if we slam on the brakes, you see the front will tip forward a bit. Trying to make a hit in an interesting angle. There we go, right on the side. And actually, the uh, engine looks like it should still be able to put power down to the wheels after that. Gotta check it if it lands upright. Come on, upright. Nah, I'm not going to land upright, but we can still check it. Engine is starved of oil, so the engine is still running. I mean, I could tell that by looking at the tachometer. But yes, it can still put power to the wheels. Amazing. And in keeping with the idea of changing vehicles all the time, how about we go to a police version of the ETK 800? It's a little silver on a white backdrop, which kind of sucks, but oh well. Oh, by the way, when you look under the map, yeah, that's, um... If you watch the video, I bet it just got blurrier right here because that is going to be something that's going to be so ugly to compress. 
I don't know why it does that, but it's like, you might be thinking the video's glitching out or something. No, that's just the way under the map looks. Like, that's just the way it looks. Not everywhere, though. Like, here it's fine. The starting zone, though, yeah, don't look under that. It looks absolutely chaotic. Let's get a spin going. 180, come on, 180. Oh, no, we're flipping instead of spinning. Try to land it right on the roof, and actually, that's... Very minimal damage for that situation. They only have radiator damage, and uh, oh, there go some uh, wheel axles and tires and stuff. Kind of drive still. Not really, but kind of. I don't think it's actually putting power down, is it? I think it's just making noise. Uh, apparently, it can't put power down. I didn't see it saying the uh, drive shaft broke, but apparently it did. Can't quite tell. It might have went inside the car, or it might have just shattered. Because you notice the exhaust shifted a bit there. Oh, it did shatter. You can see from this angle. You can actually see where it ends. And the other one, you couldn't tell for sure. Okay. Swap it out for another vehicle at all. There's the chaos again. How about a pigeon? I don't even think this thing will be able to make the jump, but I gotta try it. This one will uh, floor it the whole way. If it obliterates the uh, pigeon on the first try, we'll just try again. Pigeon wants to fly! Oh, uh, yeah. I should have thought about that. With only one wheel on the front, it'll be extremely difficult for this thing to actually land and be able to maintain control. Okay, that's barely even a wheel at this point. It's like so beat up. We'll just reset it. There's no hope. Like that thing wouldn't even come close. So slow it down. Okay, maybe not that much, but better safe than sorry, right? Then we floor it. Shouldn't have any problem getting up to the speeds we need, I would think. And I would assume we shouldn't need to go too fast with this. Oh, no, I haven't tried the pigeon. Oh, no. No chance. No chance. The tires, they just gave up on me. Like, every tire is literally gone. It is just the wheel. And, well, now half of the wheel is gone because it got dented so hard. Right, let's not try the Pigeon since that obviously does not work. How about we try the Miramar and we can use the GTZ version because I don't want to use modded vehicle at this time. And for the color, I don't think we've done a yellow one yet, so we'll use yellow. Alright, this time again, we'll floor it and see if we can land it. Well, mostly floor it, take it a little bit down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we're going to hit front hard. Oh, but it's okay. That was a surprisingly clean landing for that angle. I thought I was done for. 170 at this part. We should be fine. It's going to be close though. 126 off the jump. And it will make it with just a little bit of room to spare. And actually, since we made it so close to the edge, it wasn't that harsh of an impact and no things came up about severe damage. Although there might be here. Nope. Now we just gotta get this thing to stop and take a look, so... Left and right steering, totally fine. Ability to put power down, somewhat compromised, it seems like. Kinda pops up on the three wheels a little bit, but... Overall, safest run we had. It's not saying much, but it is technically the safest. Let's see if we can actually climb up it with this one. Like, obviously, we're not gonna get to the top top, but we might be able to roll up the hill. Oh no, it looks pretty steep, actually, doesn't it? No, we're gonna need something with some serious power. That is a lot steeper than it looks when you're going down it. Well, maybe not a lot steeper, but I just underestimated it or something. Anyways, how about we move over to a bolide. Get the fancy one. And then we'll do something dumb. We're gonna do something stupid, 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 but it might be neat to look at. So I'm going nice and slow through here as before. Okay, taking it safe. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna just watch it fly from like a crazy camera angle. Well, maybe not crazy, but you know, one that's not mounted to the car. We'll also have slow-mo, cause why not? So wait for it to get to the end of the jump, and then... Stop. Find a cool camera angle, like... Something like that, maybe. Get it real close to the car. How close can we get? Maybe about there. Unfreeze? I mean, it looked kind of dramatic, didn't it? I like how the car leaves an exhaust trail. So you can kind of follow its path, although it went under the ramp somehow. Not exactly sure how that works. Oh, because I let up on the gas, the exhaust trail is gone. Oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, well. 
All right, real time it. See, this thing's able to really keep its nose up because of that spoiler of the wing or whatever you want to call it. I think technically it's a wing just based on the way it's flying. And wow, that thing went crazy far. I can't believe how far that thing went. I think that's the farthest I've ever seen a vehicle fly here, and I bet most of it just comes down to the aerodynamics. So I'm curious, if we get the one without the wing, will it fly the same distance? And as far as I know, the um, engine on this is the same. The suspension and tires might be a little bit different, but the engine is the same, so it should come off at the end of the jump at about the same speed, which is what's important, really. The rest of it will have so little influence once it's in the air, it doesn't matter. Whoa, okay, these tires suck. They popped on me and spun me out. All right, we're going to go back to the one with the wing, remove the wing, and then we'll run that one, just because it seems like this one's tires are not reliable enough. It could be I came at a bad angle, but I'd rather not take the risk of doing it twice. So, reset, go to the menu, swap it out. Now I gotta find this part, and I don't exactly know the real position of it. I don't see it there, but that's where I would think it'd be. Do one more check. Okay, I don't see it. So maybe it's under body. Body? Race fender, 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 glass, headlight, headlight, hood, tailgate. Nope, not part of the tailgate. Okay, how about on the tail cone? There we go. I wonder if the diffuser also did anything. I can go ahead and remove it as well. Just remove all the extra aerodynamic bits. And then try it again. So I think this one has either a either and or type of thing. Stiffer suspension, fatter tires. That'll hopefully hold up to this. Maybe somehow the rear diffuser and the, the uh, wing were able, making it able to hold up better. I don't know. Nope, not that. And whoa! That is way squirrely without those extras. But yeah, it does not seem like it's going to fly as far. Like, yeah, we were squirrely a bit, and I lost some speed from that, but not enough speed to make it that significant of a difference. It really does change it having the uh, wing and spoiler on, or oops, wing and diffuser on it. Anyways, I think that'll do it for the ski jumping. Until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.